the gap between N and L prime, so which is the reduction in employment or the reduction in employment probability, keeping tightness constant, is something that um, a large economic literature, empirical literature, has been trying to measure. Uh, so this sometimes this gap between N and L, L prime. So let me. Right, so if I pull, uh, right, so this gap between L and L prime, so I don't have too much space, so I'm putting it here, just near here. This is often called, uh, so it has a name, you know, the reduction in employment keeping tightness constant. Uh, it's often called uh, the micro. Elasticity of uh, unemployment with respect to UI. This microelasticity basically it captures you know how much unemployment is going uh, to change when you change UI. But you see this micro means at the micro level. So if we looked only at one individual worker, so it means keeping tightness constant. Okay, uh, in terms uh, of notation, this is often denoted epsilon because it's an elasticity with a small m because it's micro. So this is telling us you know, how much employment is lost when we increase UI but keeping tightness constant. And so the way people measure that empirically is by looking at small groups of workers who have seen their UI change when the entire market hasn't seen a change in UI. So we can make sure that tightness is, is, uh, is controlled for. Okay? Uh, so when you hear this type of discussion that people are going to search less when we increase UI, what people are talking about is often the microelasticity of unemployment with respect to UI. Um, but so here what's key to realize, however, is that in equilibrium, if we change UI not for just one worker but for everybody, the effect of UI on the labor market will be less bad than what we would have thought if we had just looked at the microelasticity. And in fact, for a very long time, since the 70s all the way to just a few years ago, people were only looking at the at the microelasticity, and so they tended to exaggerate uh, the cost of UI on the labor market because they haven't taken into account the full picture that you can't just keep the tightness constant. Of course, if you change the labor supply in your equilibrium, you know, given at the intersection of supply and demand, if you change supply, in most cases, you're going to have a new tightness in equilibrium. And it turns out that that response of tightness is actually uh, going to dampen the initial effect of UI. So actually the kind of macro effect of UI is not as bad as uh, le, le, the, what you would think at the micro level. How do we know that? Well, you can see that the new equilibrium in the labor market is not given at this uh, point that we had here where um, the tightness is constant. The new equilibrium is given at the new intersection between supply and demand. So the new equilibrium is actually here. So this is this was the old equilibrium and this is the new equilibrium and so you can see actually um, the new equilibrium has a higher tightness And call that theta prime prime, and you can see that tightness has actually increased here. Okay, uh, 
All right, and so what does that mean? Well, the fact that tightness increases basically says that employment is not going to increase as much as what you would have thought if you had kept your uh, tightness constant. So moral hazard, you know, less effort that brings you to this point here. But then, because tightness goes up, then you're also going to actually move up the labor supply, something like this. Okay, and this is going to uh, limit the effect of uh, UI on employment. Okay, and so actually, So actually, we can uh, you know we can compare the old employment with the new employment, and that gap is now here. And as you can see, uh, the and actually, so this gap here is what we call epsilon. It's an elasticity with a capital M. The macro elasticity. The macro elasticity of an employment with respect to, uh, to UI. And as you can see in this picture, of course, the macro elasticity is less than the micro elasticity. So that means that, you know, in practice, once you compare the old equilibrium to the new equilibrium, the drop in employment, the increase in unemployment is not as big as what you would have, you would have thought, keeping tightness constant. The, response is, the reason is that tightness actually goes up in equilibrium, so that dampens. Uh, and so what's the logic here? Well, the logic is that, you know, people search less, um, but the number of jobs in the economy, you know, we have the number of shopping demand demand. So in a sense, you know, the number of jobs is um, somewhat limited here. And so when people search less, firms are not able to recruit as many workers uh, you know, as they want. Uh, and so what firms have to do is that they also have to post more vacancies uh, to try to attract more workers, which is going to stimulate, uh, you know, in equilibrium is going to stimulate uh, the labor market tightness. And that increase in tightness, although people search less, if the tightness is higher, the returns on search is higher, and that allows to, br that allows to bring some workers back into the labor force. Um.